Hey guys, it's Jim Nix with Nomadic Pursuits and I'm back with another video. Uh, this time I'm going to take you through a full HDR tutorial on how I use Aurora HDR Pro to process my HDR photos. Um, if you've been reading on the blog and looking at some of these other videos I've done here, you'll see that I've been using Aurora a lot. And the truth is I love it. It's a great product and so I'm going to take you through my workflow. Um, I, I manage all my, uh, all my images in Lightroom and so I've already grabbed these three frames. This is a, a three exposure uh, bracket set I took in Norway looking out over Pulpit Rock which is this big rock sticking out over a fjord. It's very gorgeous. Uh, but I grabbed those three and I'm exporting so I'm going to hit Create HDR. You will notice that you can tick alignment maybe if you were shooting handheld or ghost redu reduction if you had a lot of moving stuff and chromatic aberration but I'm going to skip all that and just hit Create HDR. So it's going to drop those three into Aurora HDR Pro and it's going to merge them together into a single uh, base HDR image. And uh, let me, uh, it'll take just a moment to, to merge those and give you the, the base image, but it'll be here in, uh, in no time at all. And then I'll take you through uh, how I edit the photo. Uh, so there you go. There's your base photo. What I usually do is uh, I usually hit the reset button in the bottom because uh, Roar tends to, when you bring an HDR in, it tends to. Uh, uh, move. I think it's in the structure or in the tone. I can't. Remember. I think it's in tone. I think it moves it uh, the sliders just a little bit. But I've taken everything off. I've completely reset it. So I'm going to start from scratch. If I hit the preview min, uh, preview uh, button, you can see there's no difference between before and after. So now, what a lot of people would do, and which is totally fine to do and, and and easy to do, is you can just go into these menus and start moving sliders, right? The tone, the structure, etc., in order to uh, to make changes. Um, I actually use the presets. I've historically not been a preset guy, uh, but I've, I've gotten to where I really like the presets. So I'm going to start with that. You go down to the preset button, click that once. Uh, I, I've, I was in the realistic HDR preset category. So if you click on that, here's all of your categories. You can move between them. I just click dramatic. You can see there's lots of options here. Uh, Trey has some presets. There's there. There's also landscape. Uh, but I actually like one of these uh, realistic HDR presets. It's actually the first one. It's called Balanced and Realistic. So if you take a look at that, if you click here, it'll drop the preview onto the bigger image. So if I do a preview, that's before, that's after. You can see, I don't want to do that. Remind me tomorrow. Thank you, Apple. Um, you can see that the, pre uh, the preview shows what the image will look like with the preset applied. So I like that one. So I'm going to hit the preset button again. It's going to drop the menu out of view. So I have a full screen image and then it'll apply the preset and that's done, right? So before, after, before, after. So that's the image. Some people uh, actually could stop there. You might say, gosh, that looks great and I'm done. And that's totally fine. If that's the case, you just hit apply and it takes you back to, to Lightroom or save it to your desktop if you're not using Lightroom or something like that to manage your images. Uh, but I'm not done. I could come in here and change the tones uh, maybe change structure. I actually think I might bump up clarity a little bit. I like the clarity slider a lot. It's very powerful. Um, I could come in here and uh, do denoise, but I'm going to do that on a separate layer in just a moment. You can make color adjustments, right? These are all global because you're on the base image layer. Um, top and bottom lighting, maybe you think the sky is too bright uh, and you want to darken it or something. And there's also color filters. You can come in here just on the individual blues and change saturation and luminance. Or maybe you want the yellow on kind of the rock to pop. You can do that. But I actually like it the way it is with the preset. But I want to make some adjustments to the sky and the water. I'm going to smooth them out a little bit. So I'm going to hit plus for a new layer. And I'm going to call that sky denoise. Then you just hit enter. And I've just created a new layer. But I haven't done anything to it yet. So what you want to do is you want to come in. You grab the brush. And if you notice, as soon as you move that, once you hit the brush and move the mouse on top of the image, um, you'll see that the uh, the brush has shown up here. So if you take the left bracket key, you can change the size. I'm going left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key makes it bigger. Okay. You can also come up here to the brush menu and just change it here, right? You can change the softness if you like. You can change the opacity. Uh, you can change the size, right? So uh, I'm going to start with that and start brushing it in, but you don't see anything. So if you hit the mask, you can start seeing what you're masking and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller with the left bracket key uh, and I'm going to come over here and just create a mask on top of the sky because I want to smooth that out and uh, take away it's not really noise as much as it is detail 
and then I'm gonna go a little bit smaller, come in here and uh, just smooth some of that out across there. Okay, so there's a mask for the sky, but as I said a moment ago, I also wanna do the same thing for the water. There's a little bit of detail in the water and I prefer the water to be smoother. So I'm gonna come in here and just paint a mask on this same layer on the, um, on the water. And then uh, I'm gonna bracket key bigger so I can paint this more quickly so I don't just keep you hanging while you're watching me uh, paint in a mask, right? So there you go, there's a quick mask. Uh, actually, you know what? There's a couple of spots in here where it's kind of thin, I'm gonna do that. And there's a little spot over here where you can get a little bit of water. So I am taking care of that business. And there you go, if you turn that off, uh, makes it easier to see the image. I'm gonna go into the denoise uh, menu panel and I'm just gonna start moving this stuff to the right. I wanna smooth this out, I wanna go super smooth. So if you can see the water and the sky just got a lot more smooth and it almost looks like you're, you're faking a long exposure because you're smoothing it out so much uh, in this case. Uh, let me show you the preview. Uh, well, that's the before and after, but let me show you, let me just turn off this layer actually. So there's the before. If you look in the, the sky and look in the water, you can see a bit more detail. And there's the after. I like that better. I like it to be kind of smooth. I might even make it a little bit smoother and just give it that super smooth, kind of dreamy look, which I like quite a bit. So once again, if I turn off, you can see the clouds and the water have a lot more detail, especially the clouds. And if I turn that layer back on, I've really uh, smoothed that out and made it kind of a dreamy sky. And I like that a lot. Uh, but I'm not done. You could say you're done with the image, and if you compare before and after, before, after, right? Before, after, there's a bit more punch in the uh, in the in the rocks, uh, both in the foreground and, and in the middle of the frame, and a lot smoother water and sky now, right? One more time, before, after. But I'm not done. I want to give a little bit more detail punch to that land. So I'm going to add another layer, and I'm going to call that detail pop, right? Hit enter, and there you go. Once again, grab the brush, and I'm going to come over here with my right bracket key, and I'm just going to draw a mask. Oops, you can't see it, right? So hit the mask button. There you go. See what you're painting. So come over here, draw this mask across here, get this all nice and covered up, and uh, get a little bit more up there, a little bit more down here. Uh, but I also want to get this stuff, and I want to get all this rock here. This is pulpit rock, and uh, is, as the name implies, it sort of hangs out over the water like a pulpit. It's, it's very cool. And I walked over there to the edge of that, and let me tell you, that's like a, I can't remember, it's I think 1,100 foot drop. So uh, I was kind of shaking in my shoes there, I gotta be honest. Uh, uh, I don't know that I'm afraid of heights, but you know, when you're that high up, that's pretty scary. I'm just touching up my mask here. Okay, so uh, a little bit more there I missed and a little bit in the corner. Okay, so there's my mask. Now I'm gonna uh, remove that so that you can see what I'm gonna do. Now I'm in the structure category, right? So there's the close menu. I'm on the detail pop. Uh, that's the uh, that's the layer that I'm on. and uh, But I haven't done anything, so the photo looks the same as it did with the sky denoise layer uh, added. But I'm gonna go in here to the structure uh, menu panel and just drag the clarity and the HDR look and maybe the HDR amount. So in the old days, you used to have to create custom masks in Photoshop uh, or just come in with detail brushes, maybe in Lightroom or something if you wanted to bring those details out. Now you don't have to make any other round trips. You can just do all this stuff in one sitting, right? So I've got a, a detail pop layer and I'm gonna turn it off so you can see what it was like beforehand, that's before and now after. You can see that I brought a lot more pop and uh, detail into the uh, landscape. If you look over here at some of these rocks, uh, you can really tell the difference, right? Before and after. I did the same down here, and that is how you do that. Now you can make any amount of changes you want, right? So you can go crazy on the detail if you want to, and the HDR look, and just make it really kind of crazy. That really pops a lot, it's kind of fun, but you know, hey, it's a little too much for me. But if that's what you like, that's cool, right? To each his own. I don't care. Uh, I just like having fun with photos, to be honest. So let me show you one more time. Uh, there's the uh, before, right? Now let me turn the layer back on. And after, you can see the rock is a lot more detailed uh, everywhere and a lot more of a little, you know, HDR sort of look. So I like that. And truthfully, 
I'm probably about done. Um, but you know what? Maybe I want to change the uh, the lighting in the sky. So let's just call this uh, skylight, and let's go into this layer and say top and bottom lighting. And I, maybe I just want to change the the top. So there we go. I can just darken the sky a little bit. Um, you can move if you look here. This is your you know your shifting. So you can you can decide where you want the light to start and then rotate if you wanted it to be rotated. Um, I don't. I'm going to leave that at zero because I want it to be flat. I maybe want to take the sky down a little bit. There you go. I could do that in that layer. Um, and it was quick to add a layer and add that adjustment. So before, after, I might bring that up a little bit because it was a bright day, but um, I don't want it to be too bright. So before, after, there you go. I darken the sky just a little bit. The other thing you could do in this layer is go in and do something like a color toning, which is split toning, right? Where you pick the highlights and the shadows and, and apply uh, color adjustments just to those uh, categories, either the highlights or the shadows. But I'm not gonna do any split toning or color toning in this one. I like the image the way it is. Let me show you what I started with. That was the base HDR, and this is the finished HDR. We had the original image, we applied a preset, we added a layer, for the sky and the water to denoise those, and we made those really super smooth. We added a layer to make the details really pop in the rock, and then I added a layer just to change the lighting in the sky a little bit. Um, you know, you could add a million layers and do a million things, well, maybe not a million, but you know, you get the point, right? So you can just keep adding layers to do things if you just wanna have them uh, applied on that layer, and then if you decide layer you don't like them, you can just turn that layer off, right? So there's the skylight layer. I'm gonna turn that back on. I like it a little bit darker, but actually, you know what? Now that I look at it, I might go a little bit brighter. So instead of whatever I was on, 30 something, maybe maybe 15, let's see. Before, after, yeah, that's a, that's a little bit more to my taste. So there you go, there's a finished photo. And that was probably, you know, maybe 15 minutes or so. And that's a full HDR, merging three brackets, applying a filter, adding three different layers, making custom adjustments and ending up with a photo that's vastly different from the beginning. So beginning, ending, much more detail where you want it. Um, no noise at all in the sky or the water. And in fact, they've been smoothed out and they look creamy and dreamy and, and really awesome. So I'm pretty fired up. There it is. There's a quick and easy edit of a, a full workflow of an um, HDR photo being created and adjusted in, H, uh, in Aurora HDR Pro. And I'm Jim. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks again for tuning in. And have a good day. Have fun out there with Aurora. It's a great product. You'll love it.